hello everyone so good morning or good evening so based on the location that you are in okay so today I thought like I would be creating uh, some useful videos and very within a uh, important topics uh, on the mainframe so I named it as a Wednesday talks so the reason I named it is I wanted to upload every Wednesday uh, with a, a new topic okay so that's been used uh, in the real mainframe systems uh, we are working on so it can be on any or topic the first topic that I have chosen in this video is on the file transfer so today I'm going to talk about the file transfer and how this is being used uh, in your day-to-day -day work life if you're working on a if you are a mainframe programmer developer or working on the IBM mainframe systems okay so let's go ahead and get started the topic as I said it's a trans file transfer so now uh, uh, let's look into how do we transfer a data set from a mainframe uh, to a local system when I say local system the operating system that you are using it can be a Windows or a Mac okay or it can be an a Unix as well okay so now let's understand how do we transfer a data set uh, from a mainframe uh, to local system and vice versa. Okay. What are the different ways we have? So there are multiple ways of doing it. The first thing is uh, the terminal or uh, the emulator that we use uh, to connect to our the mainframe system, right? So we have different terminals like Mocha, Vista, IBM Personal Communication or PCOM or it's based on the uh, organization or the company that you are working on so the, you will be having a specific emulator is there so using that emulator so you can transfer a file and I'm going I'll, I'll be talking in detail on how do we do that and the next option that we have is an FTP so we call it as a file transfer protocol so what is this and how do we do that so I'm going to talk in detail about these two uh, ways okay first let me talk about the emulator so for example maybe you are using an emulator called Vista or Mocha so or any other emulator so using that so we can uh, transfer uh, these files the first thing is you need to know about the data right so what kind of a data set you are trying to transfer uh, to your local system either it's a text file or it's a binary file so these are the terminologies that we use right the text file or the binary file that is one thing that you need to understand okay so then next what what you'll doing so you'll go to the option 6 and then you'll be selecting uh, on the, in the emulator on the top menu options so there you'll be seeing some option called as a, a transfer or send or receive uh, export or import it depends on the emulator to emulator it varies from emulator to emulator so you can select there and uh, you can select the particular file that you wanted to download from the mainframe if, uh, if it is a local folder and uh, then also you can specify the data set that you wanted to download so the source is uh, mainframe data set and the destination is uh, uh, the, the local folder so you select that path and then you will be clicking on uh, a send option or receive option so to get the file to be loaded on to downloaded onto your local system or vice versa okay and the another important point to be noted here is you need to mention uh, the file within the quotes there okay so if you want the data to be downloaded in a binary format you need to uncheck ASCII and CRLF so you need not you should not forget this so within the emulator when you are selecting this uh, send option right or the transfer option so you'll be seeing that particular thing and uh, if you want the data uh, to be downloaded in the text formats you need to check with the ASCII and CRLF okay so that is uh, that's it you're ready to transfer the file so okay this is the general uh, the whatever the steps that I have mentioned right so this is the general process that everyone is following uh, in order to have the uh, file transferred okay so but there are some drawbacks here so what is that the number one is so it's a foreground so when the file is getting downloaded or the transferred so you need to wait you need to wait on the screen still until the file gets uploaded or downloaded right so it's a time consuming and it's a time facing so that means uh, the it takes a higher bandwidth right and also you need to wait for a, a certain time okay what if uh, if you wanted if you want the file to be transferred daily 
right if you want to if you want the file to be transferred daily to some different system right so can you uh, can you still use this option no absolutely not so this is need to be run and we, we have to automate this process right or you need to write a batch jcl so that's what i'm going to talk about here so if i what if, if you want the file transfer in a batch and then and you wanted to automate it is there any way right yes absolutely so we have a way for example i mean let's start with a simple one so when i say uh, ftp I mean the emulator. So this is uh, that's that's called that's not called as an FTP. That we called as an IND dollar transfer, which is one of the protocol that IBM was using it. I mean I mean IBM defined one, and the regular one is an FTP protocol. So here what we do is we uh, we connect to the command prompt. We go to the command prompt and we use some FTP commands like FTP open and then you use get and put commands to download the file. So, still, yeah, on the mainframe, so you can still continue your task at the back end. So, you will be writing this step of code, and uh, maybe you can write it as a bat file and then specify the parameters and you can get the downloaded. So, this is where, okay, we'll, we'll look into de more detail about that. So, but generally, that is a process that we do at the back end from the s local system. And uh, we have another uh, one uh, which is called as a connect direct or an NDM okay so so what is this an NDM means network data mover so earlier uh, this is another third party uh, application I mean I can say the thing the way uh, we where we can use it on the IBM so uh, here uh, what we are trying to do is so whenever you're transferring any file uh, and uh, maybe you can transfer a file from Windows to Unix or Windows to Windows another Windows server so there is there are different techniques I mean different ways to do it right so with a simple emulator that will not work with a simple FTP that will not work right so FTP may work but you need to have for example if you want to have the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, file based integration right so this comes where uh, as a middleware uh, to have a peer-to-peer -peer file based integration here and uh, this is uh, this is mainly pros when we have a large volume of uh, data that need to be transferred from one system to another system uh, so then especially the organizations we will they will be using this ndm or the connect direct process okay daily i mean suppose if you are working for a city bank and it is it's just an example i'm taking so if you're working for a uh, city bank and you are expected to receive some data from other system uh, some from other uh, vendor okay from other vendor they wanted to transfer from their mainframe system to the Citibank uh, mainframe system so can they do FTB no they I mean they, we need some secured process so we need uh, a secured channel so where the transfer happens and we wanted to see the logs and we wanted to maintain their logs at what time the file the vendor one has sent a file to the Citibank or uh, or maybe then uh, HSBC bank or any any other banking mostly we use the mainframe systems in the banking sectors right or the insurance or the retail anything okay so so when they're transferring the file from their system to our system so we need to track each and every uh, bit of uh, information that's being sent from their specific system right so that is where uh, this connect direct comes into the picture so that they can track each and uh, every information that is stored in the log and they have the control of it and that's the reason we call it as the data across multiple platforms or uh, the multiple file system we can say and uh, we can transfer different uh, uh, data types okay and uh, I can talk more in detail about this but I'm not going uh, much so the main focus uh, the main reason is when we have when we want when uh, it is to connect from the different systems so when the when you're receiving the data from different sources so we go with this NDM and also we have uh, other one so Axway so uh, we call it as a crossfire cross file transfer so this is of the another uh, third party uh, I can say middleware 
so we especially we use for this file transfer so this is where so normally what we do is uh, we they will be having an um, they provide some utilities we use that particular utilities and they have set of syntaxes uh, that need to be followed and like uh, how the file name should be i mean what parameter we need to use for the file name and uh, uh, and what is the source name the system name and some other things that we uh, have to mention so based on their uh, syntaxes so we pass this data information and that that way in a secure channel so the data gets transferred to the specific destination uh, or to the different systems that is being used right so when i say cross platform strike so the mainframe from mainframe to unix server we can transfer the file or we can receive the file from unix system to the mainframe or the linux and uh, or maybe the window server where they wanted to automate something and they want they are expecting some data day to day uh, daily the data from their respective systems so then we can use it uh, most of the organization will be using the connect direct ndm or maybe then axway cft right so this these are the few things that i am aware just i'm trying to share that so there may be there may be uh, different uh, options that are available and don't forget to uh, comment that if uh, whatever i'm mentioning here if you know any other other techniques that's being used uh, just do a comment within the comment section box so that i will be learning and everyone will be learning the things okay so with that said so these are the ways that we use uh, in order to transfer the file and which is very very important uh, in the mainframe world okay now let's understand uh, how do we transfer the file using a terminal emulator so we have there are two things sending a file to mainframe and receiving a file from mainframe to your local system okay so as i said the first step is to uh, in the within the emulator first is you need to go to the option 6 and then you need to select an uh, transfer option so this is something uh, i'm using the vista 3n3270 emulator so here i have selected the transfer option and then you can click on send to host or receiving from host if it's based on the your requirement whether you want to transfer a file to mainframe or receive a file to mainframe okay now let's uh, look at receiving a file from mainframe to windows so on the emulator when you select receive option there so you will be getting uh, this dialog box so where you can the first step is to the in the first step you can see here so you have to specify the mainframe data set and you have to select uh, your uh, local directory a path where you want this file to be transferred right and the other important option uh, you need to you should not forget is what kind the format that you want the data to be uh, sent received from ma uh, from mainframe to windows so that is either it's a text format or in the binary formats if you want the data in a text you, should, you need to select text and the host should be the tso and then finally you will be clicking on the receive so that you your data gets received and you can see uh, the process that is happening it will uh, show a message like these many bytes are getting transferred still processing and so on right so and another is uh, uh, enter uh, i mean so after the file is successfully transferred so you'll be getting you'll be seeing this word like ind dollar file get and uh, you're trying to, uh, this is the source file and then you will be having this particular location there and you're transferring the data in the ascii crlf right if you want to uncheck you you can you will be having an option to uncheck these formats and the data gets downloaded into the binary form since i have selected the text by default it is adding ascii and crlf when you select binary so it will be unchecked and for for few, few emulators they have provided uh, ascii and crlf options so you can directly uncheck or check the options so this is for receiving a file from mainframe to windows so now let's take uploading a file to mainframe right so this is sending something to the host when i say host host is a mainframe so you you do the similar thing so you select your local file where you have the data uh, input file and then you have an uh, target file so where uh, the to which data set you wanted to transfer either you can select again the binary format text format and you have to click send option once you click on that so you'll be seeing a message within the option 6 that is uh, i need dollar file put so 
this is the message that you see and that indicates that your file has been successfully uploaded to the mainframe so these are the two things that we need to uh, we'll be doing especially on the emulator in order to transfer the file or receive the file okay you may be wondering what exactly the ind dollar file mean okay so this is the <laughs> definition that i got it from a wiki so ind dollar file is nothing but it's a file transfer program from ibm and it, this was released in 1983 to allow the transfer of files between an ibm pc running uh, the ibm 3270 emulator uh, uh, it can be a mvs or a vcms uh, mainframe right so it has it will be using two options that is send and receive commands okay right so this was about the file transfer using emulator now ftping a file from your pc so as i said like another one another uh, thing is uh, using an ftp command right so you need to open your command prompt so then you type an ftp and then you need to open a ip address so if you look at this picture so what i did is i went to the command prompt then first i have typed it as a ftp ftp uh, prompt mode has been enabled now you will be entering uh, open IP address so IP address after opening an IP address uh, I mean entering the IP address it will prompt for your user ID and password so what you need to enter there you need to enter your TSO mainframe ID and the password that has been provided so then uh, next is to download the file from mainframe or you need to upload the file from mainframe in order to download the file from mainframe to your local system so you will be using a get uh, the mainframe data set and the specific uh, file where you wanted to download and the same way to upload the file back to mainframe so you need to use a put option okay and uh, when we are using an emulator terminal emulator to download the file or to upload the file right i have mentioned two things right the data the data is a critical important part right either binary or a text by default it is a text it will allow it uh, it will take the data as an ascii format if you want the data to be in the binary format you need to before uh, giving a get or put command you need to enter bin binary so that the data that you are going to upload or download will be in the binary format right so once you have done this uh, commands and everything so if you want to come out of from the ftp prompt so so you need to just say bye so the now you'll be coming out of this ftp thing, right so the now the connection is disconnected and another very important point to be noted here so some of the organization will not give an access to every individual developer uh, with an FTP so that access to be enabled by your network administrator or the network team so in order to use this FTP command but sometimes so most of the time so it will be disabled they will not allow and uh, you need to send a request I mean if if your project work uh, really has a need of this FTP where you are you're developing something and you really need this option to be enabled just yes, they will be enabling and you can use it so it's not that by default this is being enabled so it based on the request and the project that you are working on this FTP access uh, will be enabled so sometimes uh, I hear with some of the uh, some of them like saying like okay I'm not able to download or uh, this is not the, re the reason is the access is not provided okay so this is how uh, we do it okay As I, I was telling like okay uh, this is something where uh, you have to type all the commands and then you have to do it right so to uh, uh, we can also create a bad script here so where you will be entering your ip address whatever the commands that we have written here right so you can open a text file and you can write all these commands and uh, and the extension of the name the file name as like download dot f uh, download but bat or upload that bat okay and whenever you want to you want the file to be downloaded just run it so the file will be downloaded when you want it when you when you want the file to be uploaded just run that bat file that's it so uh, sometimes there will be a huge files for as part of the development you wanted to download it it may take like five minutes or ten minutes what you can do that if you are going with the foreground 
it's going to take a longer time and you cannot work you cannot work on the mainframe system so when you are doing something using an emulator and if the file is getting downloaded and uh, you cannot do anything right so the best way is, is used to ftp and that too uh, if you want to mm, i mean if you want to write a script you can also write a script or just you can just type the command and just leave it aside and come back and you can work on it okay so this is one uh, this is the other way of doing it okay so that's it guys so this is the i hope so whatever the knowledge uh, i mean whatever the context i have been sharing here so this may be helpful or if you feel really helpful and 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 uh, please don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel and i am also available on other uh, social media so maybe you can also uh, visit that particular uh, links and you can just subscribe to my channel so okay for more and more updates so this video whatever i have created now so i am trying i'll be try my best to uh, upload wednesday uh, wednesday talks i named it as a wednesday talk so that i can share uh, very, very important topics that may be useful for everyone okay with that said signing off for the day thank you so much